And let's see, let's do that. Uh, I think we're live. I'm not sure. It's so hard to see whether or not we're live, but I'm going to assume that we're live. So good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Did you see my bacon sandwiches? <laughs> Uh, we put something up on Instagram. Now, uh, I don't know what happens, but occasionally when we go on to Instagram, I, I do the little video thing. And uh, I did it myself a couple of weeks ago and there was no sound to it. Now, don't ask me why there's no sound because I don't get it. Michelle this morning made two little videos. One has sound and one does not have sound. But anyway, I thought that because it's my birthday week, as you all know, uh, I thought, why not show everyone the bacon sandwiches? Of course, Michelle requested something slightly different than a regular bacon sandwich. She said to me yesterday, she said, could I have an egg? So this morning, I'm making the bacon sandwiches and I'm very particular about my eggs. And if you go to Instagram, you will see the whites are actually white. There's not one little crinkle, one little crozzle. You know what a crinkle or a crozzle is, don't you? You know, as people sort of cook the bottom of the egg and, you know, it's, ugh. Anyway, mine are perfect and perfectly cooked. There's no slime on the top. And I like my eggs uh, runny. But I have a certain special way of cooking these eggs that, and they come out perfectly. So I say to Michelle, get the egg, I crack it into the pan, and I say, how would you like your egg? Would you like it uh, hard or would you like it ready? And of course, she, you do know what she said, don't you? Um, sort of not hard, hard, but not runny. Anyway, Michelle, what was the egg like? It was perfect. There, thank goodness. But it was a fluke that it was perfect. <laughs> it was a perfect consistency. But the white was white, white, white. And uh, if you do want ever in your life to, to see a perfect egg, I'm just saying, go, go to Instagram. Go to my Instagram and you'll see the perfect egg. Perfectly, perfectly cooked. Absolutely perfectly cooked. Good morning, everybody. First of all, I'd like to say good morning to my spirit guide, Gregel, who, as always, is to my right side. And... Um, Cachorro's in the corner again. Uh, he's He ate his breakfast this morning. For all of you who have sent your concerns, he ate his breakfast this morning, so he's happy. He's a happy little camper and he's sleeping. He is, uh, for, he's going to be 14 years old in July. Oh, oh. Anyway, and good morning, Michelle. Say good morning. Michelle is here with us today. Da -da -da -da. She came for the bacon and egg sandwich. That's why she came right away. <laughs> And it was she, a bonus, but that well, was not why and I she, came. And she bought me roses for my birthday, and they're gorgeous. I don't know. I meant to show them to you, but anyway. Do you want me to go get them? It means you're getting a bottle for all right. I get a bottle for regularly anyway. Okay. <laughs> you could bring in, maybe you could bring in uh, the flowers that Wendy sent me as well, because. Absolutely. Uh, Should I bring in the other thing too? What other thing? The bag that you received. Oh, yeah. My daughter sent me hydrangeas, so it's been a flowery birthday uh, this year. And my friend um, Mary Lou got me some. Uh, um, she got me some gorgeous flowers. Look at these, everybody! Look, oops, there we are. Look, I've never quite seen anything quite like that, aren't they? You, did you say they were airbrushed? Yes. Purples so there and are my and... there are my airbrushed roses and da da da. There, these are my flowers from Wendy, which I got on um, Tuesday. But look how beautiful they still are. They're, they're lasting beautifully. So uh, that's that. So there we have it. Uh, and. Um, Da -da 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 -da. I don't know if Roxanne's watching. I don't know if she is or not. I haven't done. I'm ready. <laughs> so, let me just tell you that this box came and it said nuts, 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 nuts all over this sort of 
sort of like a cardboard box, right? But it had nuts, nuts and co. And then there were little uh, sort of scribbles all over the box talking about nuts and how great nuts are and so on. And I'm thinking to myself, well, somebody's obviously sent me a gift, but they obviously don't know me very well because I, I am not allowed to eat nuts. I can't eat nuts. So I'm thinking, oh, somebody went to so much trouble. I'm, I'm holding these now. I'm actually hugging these. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> anyway, so I thought, well, I'll open the box, and what I'll do is I'll share them with, uh, you know, with uh, with everybody else. You know, I'll I'll maybe give some to the neighbours, and Michelle can take some home to the kids, and you know, uh, because because I can't eat them, so I thought, well, you know, the the, the least I could do is share them with other people. And I opened the box, and out I pulled out this bag, and it you can see it says nuts.com, uh, and uh, it's a five pound bag and when I opened it up I could not believe what was inside it's a five pound bag of dark chocolate covered cherries so they weren't nuts at all uh, and I didn't open them until my birthday day because I got them a couple of days before so I didn't open them until my birthday day but the problem is that I've left them sort of on the kitchen counter and <laughs> every time I go by I kind of put my hand in uh, there um, uh, so I just would like to say Roxanne uh, I don't know if you're watching this or not but thank you 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 because this is the gift that keeps on giving five pounds of dark chocolate cherries and I am in heaven and I've had lots of other just some beautiful cars and things so thank you everybody and I've had lots and lots of birthday wishes from everybody it's still my birthday week uh, here's the rule in, in my family we we have our birthday day but we also start the birthday early unless of course the birthday lands on a Sunday we start the birthday on a Sunday and we go through to the following Saturday uh, Saturday night is the end of our birthday week so every day every day this week Reese has to give me something for my birthday he can blow me a kiss or he can just you know whatever he tells me a joke or something uh, so anyway so uh, so it's still my birthday week so we're still celebrating which is why the egg and bacon sandwich for Michelle and um I've been reading the competition, the answers to the, the some of the entries to the competition and they're so good. We had so many in and they're so, so good. So I'm going to read a few out. Uh, I've got to read them through properly. I've got to sort them through properly. Um, but the entry date was, the last date for entry was um, on uh, uh, Tuesday. Uh, so, um, so I just read them through briefly today and I shall read them again. Um, but I think, I think we do have, uh, a winner and a close second and third and, but they're all pretty good, aren't they? Yeah. So anyway, we shall sort them out and I shall let you, I shall read some of them out next week and I shall let you know who gets the, the prizes. All right. So, but thank you, thank you, thank you everyone who entered. Thank you for entering and thank you for having fun with us. Do we have anybody, Michelle? Yes, is, we have several people on this morning. Wait, wait, wait. Is, uh, close your eyes. Is there anybody there? <laughs> is there anybody there? It reminds me of that Pink Floyd song. Every time you say it, I just love it to pieces. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I know the Pink Floyd song. Yeah. I think you might have said that to me before, though. I have. I know I've told you multiple times. Okay. All right. So um, Cheryl is on, and she said, wow, wow, wow. I almost forgot. She must have almost forgot about today. Oh, <laughs> so, um, good morning, show. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Judy said, good morning. Good this morning, is her morning. first visit with us. Oh, oh, well, we hope you enjoy. Uh, I, I've, I've got these chocolate cherries here. And uh, they're so tempting. Oh, she's, she's moving them. Michelle is moving them because I was, I was so tempted to put my hand in. But as you well know, if I'm eating chocolate cherries... <laughs> And talking to you at the same time, it's not going to be pretty. So you, you really don't want me to do that. So, sorry, Michelle. Keep, she, so she's taking them away from me. Keep going, my lovely. Um, Wendy said, good morning, all. Good morning. 
Cheryl said, happy birthday week. Thank you. <laughs> and that you're making her hungry. <laughs> Wendy said, don't show the bacon sandwiches, I'll die. Instagram, we ate, we, we ate Yeah, they're them. gone. <laughs> they're gone, but uh, they are on Instagram. There are, two, there are two little videos on Instagram. One has sound and one doesn't, but even though the one doesn't have sound, we don't know what we did. I did them exactly the same way. We did them exactly the same way. Michelle was taking the video while I was making the sandwiches, but one has sound, one does not have sound. If anybody knows what it is that we're doing wrong, please, please, please let us know because we have no idea. Uh, but uh, even so, you can still see, you can still see, you can see the messy kitchen, but you can still see uh, how I'm making the bacon sandwiches. Lots of butter, lots of cr crossly, crunchy, crispy bacon, and uh, an egg on the top. There you are. And so keep going. Joy is on and she says hello, Morning, Joy. everybody. Morning. <laughs> um, Cheryl, I'd really like to be able to pass on that because she's asking if they can see me, LOL. See Michelle. Can we see Michelle? But I don't have any makeup on. Oh, come like, on. My hair's all funkified. I'll pop in for half a second, but that's quick, not the best you're uh, Quick, get. quick, quick. She's very pretty, just to let you know. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Is that it? That, that's it. <laughs> I, I am not ready for to be on show today. <laughs> she always looks nice, so there you have it. You should have seen her with the bacon sandwich in her mouth. <laughs> and me, too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Joy said, happy, happy birthday, Rosemary. Oh, thank you. Um... Rebecca says, a birthday is for life, isn't it, Rosemary? Thanks for everything, and any tips from you or Gray Eagle, please. And then she says, hi, Michelle. <laughs> well, you know, I will tell you, um, the, the because of the competition, I'm going to tell you today uh, the best advice that uh, I was ever given um, but I'm also going to, and somebody, uh, somebody actually who entered the competition did tell us what the worst advice they had. Yeah. Would you mind turning the fan on for me? Just flip that Absolutely. switch up, please. Are you sitting here boiling hot? I'm always I am like, you know, that. you know, okay, right all the way up. Yeah, lovely. That's thank you. We need the fan on, it's hot. The air conditioning is on, but for some reason... It's sticky, sticky we're, today. We're getting a little hot in here. Um, but I'm also going to tell you uh, the worst advice that I was ever given. The best advice that I was ever given, um, aside from uh, the cradle, uh, the best advice that I was ever given was uh, from my daddy. And the very, very worst advice uh, that I was ever given, and it really was the worst advice I was ever given, was also from my daddy. So he was extremely wise, and the advice that he gave me that was the worst was for a reason. But we'll go into that in a little while. Um, okay, keep going, Michelle. Rebecca said, wishing you a warm and happy birthday week, Rosemary. Oh, thank you. Thank um, you. Vera would like to know... If your birthday was the 18th, she said, happy birthday, how young and beautiful. <laughs> See, hooray, hooray. <laughs> Thank you. And oh, no, so Vera, her birthday was the 19th. Uh, yeah, my birthday is the 19th. And you, you do understand, in England, what you just did there, which I do appreciate, actually, Vera, was, you gave me such a lot of flannel, the young and beautiful part. In England, we call it flannel. Uh, I don't know what you call it here, but anyway, I appreciate it. Then I'll take it anyway. So, <laughs> all right, keep going, Michelle. Vera said, hi, Michelle, lovely lady. Hi, everyone. Chris said, the flowers are lovely. Um, Cheryl said, oh, she is pretty. Yes, she is pretty. Not today. Yes. <laughs> oh. Mary said, Rosemary, you look beautiful today. Thank you, you must be getting more beautiful as you go. Happy birthday week. Michelle, thank you too. Oh, that's so and nice. And she'd like to know if Grey Eagle has any insight about the pandemic. Uh, it'll be over soon. 
<laughs> yes, there you are. There's your insight. Um, you know, it was interesting because actually somebody did say, and I can't remember, sent us an email, I can't remember now where it came from, but the truth, oh, I know, I, I heard it on... Was, was it that something the, that you and I were talking we about? We were talking about it earlier on. Uh, and it's so, so true. Now, when I was a kid and growing up, and those who are older than me, and even those, some of you who are younger than me, it is certainly true that if there was something going around like this, all the neighbours would just send the kids out all together. They'd all gather together. They'd get it over with, get it done with. Everybody would become immune, and, and that would be the end of that. Uh, I'm not suggesting... Everybody get it together and be I'm done. Not, I'm not suggesting that's the way to go. Uh, but it is so true if uh you know if kids had chicken pox or if kids had measles or whatever mm -hmm. you know go play with so and so that way you'll get it then you get over it you'll get immune to it and that and this is really this is how it used to be uh i think we were tougher then somehow um we were not so so pampered there was never a question of anybody washing their hands ever for anything i certainly did not grow up with my mother saying to me after i you know gone to the bathroom don't forget to wash your hands uh I, you know i grew up in a rough neighborhood nobody we never washed our hands we had a bath Four once meals. A, once a week we never washed our hands prior to meals uh, and, you know, the interesting thing is that, uh, of course, I'm not going back into Victorian times now, you do understand. The interesting thing was that most of the kids, and certainly the kids in my neighbourhood, you rarely heard of a child dying of anything particular. Uh, we were tough, we were hardy, we were, you know, eat eat that dirt, it'll do you good, you know. It's, it's, um, it's uh, I, I mean, is it? I don't know. Maybe we should have a a, a, a a discussion about this. Is it a good thing that we should be so hyper clean or not? When I had my uh, daughter, uh, nobody nobody came in and washed their hands before they held the baby, I can assure you. It just didn't happen. And nobody got sick. But it seems sometimes... Is it possible, Michelle, what do you think? Is it possible to be too clean? I think it, I think that the problem is is that it's not horrible to be clean. Well, I hope not. But in the same aspect, you're not strengthening your immune system. No, that's if exactly. You're wiping away everything yeah. before your body can that, learn to fight it. That's you know, that's so you know, maybe we should have a competition and maybe well we'll see later. But maybe we should have a discussion of, of on whether it whether, you know, is cleanliness really next to godliness? Uh, we had a bath once a week and we shared the bath water and I was always because I was the hated child. I was always the last one in the bath, but my youngest sister was always the first one in the bath because she got the clean water and so on. And I was always, and you were washing in other people's dirty stuff and so, but you know, uh, but this is how we used to do it. And uh, um, we never washed our hands before we ate. You could have been in the garden, you could have been scrubbing around, you could have been doing anything at all. And then you sit at the table and you eat your food and nobody ever said, in my heart, I know, and some of you are saying, really? Ooh, really? See, and yet, and here. yet, my grandson is just the opposite. He comes in, he washes his hands without even thinking about it. Even without the pandemic, he would wash his hands before a meal. He, you know, it was just that, you know, this is the way we're teaching our kids now. Uh, but is it possible that we are so clean and we wash away so many germs that we have uh, sort of somehow our immune system is now retarded uh, so that's anyway uh, that's moving on because we get I'm getting really into this now it's a, you know and it's really not well, you know and it's really not actually a bad conversation to have maybe not celebrating your birthday week conversation yeah let's not do that yeah yeah but <laughs> um 
Let's see. Let's go to the next one. Yes. Um, Rebecca said that she, this is what she wrote. She says, Morning, Michelle, Rebecca. with respect, you look related to, to Rosemary, both good looking gals. Oh, Rebecca, that's so nice of you. I don't know if it's nice for poor Michelle to be compared to me, but there we are. It's not so horrible. <laughs> um, Cheryl would like to know, why does it seem like there are two species of humans? I mean, there are like a lower level and a higher level. Wow. Um, I think it has to, I, Cheryl, I might be wrong, but I think it has to do a lot with common sense and immunities. Because it just seems like some people, they don't understand what their immune system does. You have to be more explicit because I, I think we're all pretty much equal, although some of us are really much more stupid than others. My grandson, <laughs> when I use the word stupid, he gets very upset with me. That's <coughs> not a nice word to use, Mosey, he says to me. But I was in the car park the other day uh, with my friend and we were getting some sort of, you know, takeout stuff. And we were sitting there waiting and... This, this guy in a truck and he uh, reversed and hit the car behind him and then he pulled forward and then he hit the car in front of him then he reversed and he hit the car behind him again and then he reversed again and almost hit the car in front of him uh, and this went back and forth and we're sort of looking I, I'm actually looking and thinking yeah, you know, sometimes you just simply cannot get into another person's brain and you do have to wonder at the stupidity of people sometimes. Uh, but it's not nice of me to say that, is it? I wasn't being very spiritual because when I was in the car park, I was looking at my friend saying, is he, is he stupid or what? Is he dumb or what? I mustn't say the word stupid. It's apparently politically incorrect to say the word stupid. Although it is a perfectly legitimate word to use. It is in the dictionary. I'm getting so tired of all this politically correct or incorrect, uh, you know, verbiage that we're allowed to use. So fiddle it. You know, I won't say the word in front of my grandson because it upsets him. But hey, some people can be really dumb and other people can be... And sometimes, have you noticed, sometimes the most intelligent people can do the stupidest things. You know, their intelligence, they have cranial knowledge, a lot of cranial <coughs> knowledge, but no common sense whatsoever. So maybe that's what she means, Michelle. What do you think? Maybe that's what know. it is. Uh, it's Look, it's my birthday. I can say anything I want on my birthday week. So there you go. Next, Michelle, keep going. <laughs> um, Rebecca said that she just wanted to say thank you to you and Grey Eagle. Who is that? Rebecca. You're she was the one that started the whole... <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all right. We're glad. <laughs> we don't mind controversy. No, Or absolutely. controversy, however um, you'd like to say it. Wendy said that she didn't wash her hands either and that her immune system is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Me too. I mean, look at me. I'm, I'm, what am I, 93... And uh, get out look, of here. Look, <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> um, Vera said, Rosemary, have you heard China has a lot of outbreak again for the corona? It was Chinese, they brought it in from Russia. I haven't heard that. I don't watch the news either. Um, I, I really don't. I don't read the newspapers and I don't watch the news. It's amazing how up I am on these things. But I actually really, uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm actually, I'm done. Right now it's my birthday week and I'm not going to talk about the coronavirus or all that stuff. I'm going to be a happy, happy, happy camper. And I'm going to make the most of things. And I'm going to have a positive attitude towards everything and um here's a joke for you though did you know that they finally <laughs> they finally named uh the first that they gave out the name of the man who first had the virus and his because uh, it's a chinese name and his name was r chu <laughs> some of you may get that and some of you may not r chu anyway 
Um, Chris keep going. Let's keep going. This, this is. I did warn you last week. We're going to have some fun, but you might not appreciate it because I'm British, and this is, you know, this is, uh, this is English. Uh, my British sense of humour running riot, and it's. I can feel the whole thing is just going down, down, downhill <laughs> here. And that poor girl who was who's here for the first time, you'll never come <laughs> back, will you? You'll never want to do this again. We are not usually like this. We're usually a little bit more serious. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's my birthday. Can I, can, what can I tell you? Yes, Chris, what do you want? <laughs> What do you want, Chris? She says, it bothers me when I hear people bashing each other, especially when they will never meet that person and be able to have a conversation. Wouldn't it be better to lift them to prayer and to pray for them? Yeah, I don't know what she's referring to, but... Um... Maybe she's referring to a question she I missed was, here or no, some comments that I missed. No, she was referring to when we were talking about common sense and people who don't have any. And you were using that lovely word that Reese hates. Stupid. The word yes. stupid. You can say that word. It's a it's a perfectly. I hate that word. <laughs> well, you know, but it's a it is a it's not very nice if you use it as an insult. I don't even use that around but my kids there, at all. But there are times when I I do something that it, I feel is such a such a stupid thing to do, and I'm happy to say to myself, "Well, why on earth? What? What's you know? For what stupid reason did you do that?" I don't I don't feel that it's a derogatory term in any way, shape, or form. And as long as you're not sort of throwing it some throwing it at someone. Uh, as an insult, then I think it's a perfectly ordinary word that we sh shouldn't get. Let's not overthink things, right? Let's move on. Cheryl would like to know what your necklace is. <laughs> like, that was my daughter interfering. She forgets that I do these things. The necklace, it, it's a Victorian, it's a locket. I will never open it. You'll never know what's inside. Even my daughter doesn't know what's inside. She'll only know what's inside when I've died. I've gone to heaven. And she she inherits it, which uh, I'm not saying she I'm not saying she's waiting for me to die, but she can't wait to inherit it. It's 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 a it's an old, a gold uh, uh, Victorian thing, and the chain is what they call a belcher chain it's an old watch fob chain if you can see that's the fob on it so i put it on that that chain <coughs> and i've had it for years and years. i can't remember years and years and years and years and years yes the i love i i love victorian furniture and i love uh, the victorian jewelry that they have i you know sort of a pretty much a fan of the uh, of the Victorian era it's sort of the he the furniture is beautifully carved and heavy and I've got a few pieces I'm looking at right this minute let's go let's come on let's uh, let shall we be let's be serious now shall we Carla said hello Rosemary good morning Carla my mother is still sad and doesn't accept that her mother died last year oh what message could Set my grandmother to her or from Grey Eagle. Thank you. Um, I think uh, I think that uh, the message is one that we could all uh, sort of take to heart and a pretty good piece of advice from Grey Eagle here is that, um, you know, when our loved ones in the spirit world, when they see us and they see us uh, unhappy or they see us grieving, uh, then it affects them tremendously. And I think that the thing that we can do, the best thing we can do for our loved ones in the spirit world is no matter how hard it is, and it can be very hard sometimes, but no matter how hard it is, I think the best thing to do is to, to smile as much as we can, to live our lives in a way that we know that they would want us to, and to be joyful in our life. Because let's face it, it's, it doesn't last very long, does it? it you know, it's sort of uh, 
uh, a blink in a blink of an eye whether you live to uh, to 50 whether you live to 100 or whether you even live to 120 it's still life goes pretty quickly and and so you know if you could perhaps remind your mom that her mum is watching her and watching over her and uh, uh, if she sees us sad, then that makes her sad too. But if she sees her making the best of her life, uh, laughing and enjoying life, that's what our loved ones in the spirit world want to see us doing the most. And, and so many of our loved ones in the spirit world, when they come through to say that, to, to, to speak to us, that is one of those things that they, that they want to say to us. Live your life in the best way that you can and enjoy your life. Uh, also, another thing, if I can add to this, and Greg and I are just chattering away here, if I can add to that and say again, which you, many of you have heard me say before, uh, you know, when, when we lose someone, we are the ones who are left behind, we are the ones who are grieving. But if we can understand that death is actually not a punishment, it is something that happens to every one of us, it's, it's an inevitable, every single one of us, no matter what we do, we are going to get that point where, you know, it's our turn to go. But death is not a punishment and it is the beginning of the rest of our journey. It's the beginning of the next stage of our journey. And so even though it's hard for us, really hard for us, uh, because the pain of losing someone and not having them in our lives anymore is tremendous. Um, if we if we really really love them uh, we we really I think need to try to be joyful for them even though while even while we're sad for our own selves we need to be joyful for them yes next Michelle the next comment was from joy and she goes oh my god loved it ah choo and then all these emojis, and it says, good one, Rosemary. <laughs> oh, it wasn't me. Actually, it was my friend Chris who sent it, to, sent them to me, and it made me chuckle. <laughs> and in this day and age, when it would seem that the world in general is having a really lousy time, if we don't smile and if we don't try to find the fun when we can, then we just all of us we just it just affects us and we all go downhill and we all get depressed and uh, we can't we can't let that happen can we so fun 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 uh you know being mindful and not being uh, not ignoring the fact that so many people are suffering not at all but at the same time uh i refuse to lose the joyful moments and if i'm always thinking of the negative and if i'm always sort of going down that road of oh gosh what will happen what could happen and so on and so forth and like so many people in the political realm oh my goodness would you all pack it in it's one party against the other party it's his fault no it's his fault no she, he didn't do what he was supposed to do. no he didn't how about grow up join together and say you know what they're doing the best that they can let's join together and do the best that we can all of us together we stop pointing the finger people stop blaming stop you know and and just you know get let's all get together on the same page please because you know ordinary people don't we don't like it we don't we really don't like it when you start poking and pointing the finger and blaming each other for things that you know that really this has very little to do with what we did we did not cause this and everybody tries to do their best nobody is trying to kill anybody off here nobody is deliberately you know not doing the right thing so just please get a grip everybody and all of you politicians are, that are out there would you please grow up stop wanting the competition between each other and just get together for the good of all of us and that's my message for today that's i'm done now because i rarely talk politics you but want a new joke it's driving me crazy yeah new joke michelle what do you call a fake noodle what do you call a fake noodle i michelle i don't know what do you call a fake noodle an impasta.
about it. They passed up. Oh, yeah, well. I didn't say uh, it was a good yeah, joke, no, but, but it's family yeah, friendly. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Rebecca said, words in the dictionary, Rosemary, I can relate. I live in Ireland, and if a child is naughty, the term used here is bold. Oh. Which is now not allowed to be used in child care oh. because of the different meanings. Oh, really? What a shame. What a shame. And what a shame we can't teach our children that it's okay to be bold. Be bold. Be brave. Be do all of that stuff. What is the matter with everybody? It's like, oh, come on, people. Get real. Get your feet on the ground and, and you know, let's uh, let's go back to basics a little bit, can we? Uh, um, moving on. Let's Dean's next. on. He yes. said he was grocery shopping to replenish his empty shelves and ended up missing half the show. Oh, well, never mind. You can play it back, Dean. I, I want to come back to the to the, the thing before. And we're talking about words. And we're talking about... I'm, I'm going to tell you one of the worst things that, uh, that I saw as far as child care is concerned in regular schools. Now, there are lots of much, much, much worse things that go on. We know that. But I was invited... This is a few years ago. I was invited to my grandson's... Uh, school uh, and I was invited to tell a story and I was also invited to go and cook this was two, two times and um, and so I'm there with the kids and we're all sort of you know this is before I started doing my thing um, and all of a sudden I hear one of the teachers bringing all the kids to attention all right friends okay friends I look at my daughter and she's, she's, just, she's giving me the dead eye don't say anything don't react don't we have come along friends these are the teachers calling the kids come along friends come along friends here's why I think it's the very worst thing that we can ever do we are teachers we are not your friends we are your educators if we are not your friends we are your educators and we demand or we should be demanding respect from you and we should be teaching you that we are not your friends, we are your educators. The same way that parents are not your friends. I remember my daughter at sort of 14 or something saying to me, she was weeping and wailing over something and sort of complaining about something. I thought we were going to be friends. She said, I thought we were going to be friends. And I looked at her and I said, first and foremost, I'm your mother. When you grow up, we'll be friends. But right now, I'm your mother. Know the difference. And it does seem to me that, you know, the only way for our children to learn respect is their kids. Don't call them friends, teachers. Mm -hmm. They are your children. All right, children, gather together. Okay, kids, however you want to say it. But... There is, whether you like it or not, there is a dividing line and all of a sudden it's become politically incorrect for a teacher in New York City and New York State to say to their kids, okay kids, let's gather around. What's wrong with the world? Is it me? Maybe it's me. Maybe you think that it's me. Please let me know if you think that it's me. I just think that the absolute sure way to teach our children disrespect is to not show them that we are their teachers, that we are their parents, we are the adults and they are the kids. That's it. You're the kids, you respect us. And if we don't teach them that, then as we can see, all hell breaks loose in our societies. So please, you know, uh, anyway, moving on. I'm saying far too much here. It is my birthday week. I'm allowed to say anything I like. So, go on. Keep going. Yes. Judy is still with us. Ah, oh, Judy. <laughs> Wimp, Judy, look. We're not normally like this, my darling. We're much, normally so much more serious and so much more sober. But anyway, go ahead. And she says... <laughs> Thank you. My husband died four years ago. I still miss him and get very sad. And that she's going to try and be happier. Oh, Judy. Judith? Is it Judith? That, Judy. That's Judy. 
that is that is really nice to hear my darling and it's i know how hard it is because for all of you out there who have lost your partner or you have lost that special someone in your life it is not easy uh, it's it's so much easier to sort of be by yourself put yourself into that room not want to go out anywhere not want to socialize because you know when we're in pain and when we're grieving it's really really tough to force ourselves to to get out of that but honestly if we really do love our spouses our loved ones in the spirit world and judy obviously you do uh, I love the fact that you've taken that little piece of, out of all of the madness that's going on this morning, I love the fact that you've taken that little piece of, uh, of advice and I do hope that you manage to smile more, my darling, because he'll love it. Okay. Michelle. All right. All right, all right. Yes, go for it. Go on. <gasps> Cheryl said, yes, here's Cheryl. a positive story. Oh, oh. Yes. A lady I never met gave me $40 just because she wanted to. Then I met a person and gave them the $40 because I loved paying it forward. That's it. That was the uh, story. And uh, who's that? Cheryl. Cheryl, darling. That's lovely. That is that is so nice. Uh and you know, paying it forward and I'm I'm I love the story, but paying it forward, we also know it means if you give somebody a kindness, a smile or something, you hope that it makes them feel better and that they're more, more likely to give somebody else a smile. So it's all about our attitude and having the right attitude and just simply, you know, if, if you go up to someone and say, you know, uh, I love your coat or I love your jacket or, you know, or what a beautiful baby or something. Whatever it is, you go up, you say you be, you, you're nice. It brings a smile to them. It makes you feel good. And they're more inclined then to be nicer to somebody else. So it's sort of paying something out does, it pays it forward. Uh, I am going to uh, tell you very briefly a story. And I've I think I've told this story before. I came out of the bank um, a few months ago and um, I was my there was a car parked right next to mine and the, the the windows of this car were down and there were two ladies sitting in the in the in the front and I was sort of getting my stuff open the car my car door getting the stuff in and I was hearing this the lady in the passenger seat right next to me she was sobbing and sobbing and sobbing and sobbing she was absolutely heartbroken and you couldn't help but hear it and uh, it would have been so so easy for me to think well it's not my business and I can't interfere I'll just get in my car and drive away but being me it's not going to happen as you know and uh, I, I turned around and I reached into her car and I just took hold of her hands and uh, she sort of they both ladies looked at me completely startled and I held her hands and I said very softly and very kindly to her, um, please, please don't, please don't cry. Um, can you, you, would you like to tell me about it? Can you tell me what's, what's wrong? If I can help you, I will. And uh, she just burst into tears and she started to tell me that everyone thinks she's crazy and on and on was the story. And uh, I stood and as I was holding her hands, of course, I was giving her healing. And I listened and then I talked to her very gently. Then the lady who was in the other seat, the driver, she started talking to me as well. And uh, they were, they just basically opened up to me. And uh, I just said to them, you know, it's very hard when people say mean things about you. But I looked at this lovely lady who was in tears and I said, but, but you know that you're not crazy, right? And, uh, and that's all that matters. It's what you know inside of yourself and that's all that matters to you. And when I left them, these two ladies were smiling and uh, well, the lady was crying, was blowing her nose, but she had a smile on her face. And I like to think whether it will happen or not, we don't know, do we? But I do like to think that um, you give something out and and then somebody gives that something to somebody else and, you know, and hopefully, you know, kindness is addictive. 
uh, when you get it, it's easier to give it. Right, I'm going to uh, give you now the, uh, the best piece of advice that my father ever gave to me. Uh, aside from Grey Eagle, it was the best piece of advice that I ever had. And you'll think it's weird, but if you, you have to understand that I'm a warrior soul. So, and my father was a, a soldier. So it, this is where this whole thing comes from. And he said to me, uh, never step on a battlefield unless you're sure you can win. In other words, don't ever start an argument if you, you know, if it's, if it's lost or don't just argue for the sake of it. Don't just fight for the sake of it. Never step on a battlefield unless you're sure you can win. But if you find yourself forced to be on the battlefield, fight like hell. Whether you win or lose, only fight if it's a fight worth having. Only fight if it's morally something that you feel that you absolutely have to do uh, even though you know that if you win at least you stood up and you fought anyway uh, so that's the best piece of advice the worst piece of advice that he ever gave to me I was uh, I was pining over a boyfriend I was about 15 or 16 or something I was pining over a boyfriend who you know whatever and um, my father came in I was playing the piano my father came in from the garden and he rarely said anything he rarely commented about anything really that you know that sort of certainly nothing to do with emotions and emotional issues ever uh, and he came in from the garden and he opened the door to the uh, to the to, to where I was sitting with the piano and in his sergeant major voice, come here, you know, uh, any time my father said, come here, you'd be quaking in your boots, your stomach would clench up, you didn't know whether you, you were, you know, you were in trouble or, or, or what. Anyway, so I went to the door and I'm standing there, it was a timid little thing at the time, and I'm standing there and, and he, he, he said, here, and he hold, held out his hand to me. And in his hand was a fairly large stone that he'd taken from the garden. He said, here, he said, this is what I want you to remember to do for all of your life. Make your heart as hard as this stone. When he said it, I knew why he was saying it to me, because he just didn't like to see me hurt. He didn't. Well, he couldn't say that to me, could he? Because people in those days, in those generations, never talked about their emotions or anything like that. But what he was saying to me was, protect your heart by making it as hard as you possibly can. So even while I knew why he was saying it to me, I also knew in that moment that it was the worst piece of advice that anybody could ever give. I knew that he was wrong. I've never been able to make my heart like a stone, thank goodness. It has caused me tremendous pain and heartache, as all of you have experienced, I'm sure. Um, and But anyone who thinks that they can harden their heart, what they do is, when you're hardening your heart, is you're building up the walls. And so you're pushing other people out, you're locking people out of your life, but you're also locking yourself in and that's the worst thing we can ever do uh anything else we've got here michelle yeah we've got lots okay go for it then <laughs> um vera would like to know if you believe in dowsing rods i do and can it come some evil in there mm -mm. she always says a prayer before using for protection yeah and will you talk about them um i think i tell a story uh so I think which book it's in, I think it's in The Eagle and the Rose. And I tell a story about a, a, a man whose name was John Michaelides. And I went to Crete and I met John Michaelides, who was a professional dowser. And in, in the area of Crete that he lived in, the, the, you know, there was very little water. And I don't know if any of you have been to Crete, but it's a sort of it's a beautiful island. It's rocky. It's uh, sort of it's fairly mountainous in places. Uh, and uh, the, the side that I was on, the Greek side um, 
was you know very sort of very dry so they have trouble finding water and so john michaelides used to make his living at actually dowsing for water and he had his dowsing rods and so on and so forth and uh the whole of that story there's way more way way more, more to that story oh, than sorry. i'm actually telling you but uh, it was an amazing amazing story it's one that we should i should tell i know the story you, you did. <laughs> so it's one we should tell on our saturday morning shows but anyway uh and um so and uh so i have taught my students how to use the pendulum how to use dowsing rods because it's it's all the same thing because it's extending your energy and you can do really amazing things uh, with your energy because the rods really it's not about you, you know that uh, people make a fuss about what kind of rods and which trees that you should get them from willow trees or what have you and yes all of that is is a uh, is relevant in that it is the weight of the of the rods and so on and so forth however uh, simply it's simply an extension of your own energy and what you're doing is you're raising your level of consciousness and you're extending your that level of consciousness to a point where your energy is sort of affecting the rods or the pendulum whichever it is that you're using and and uh, you know and uh, so yes it works really really well uh, a, a, a friend of me, mine who we're going back to it was a bank in England actually and this the, he was the bank manager but he became a friend uh, he was a member of the dowsing society and uh, I remember sitting in his office one day I'd gone in for something completely different and he said to me so what do you think about dowsing rosemary and he had he brought out this map and uh, he said what do you think he said uh, we're looking for a particular site on this map and um uh, we found it using uh well using me really but uh but yeah uh, and it's such a lot of fun to do we should talk more about that yeah next michelle okay <laughs> Um, Rebecca and Joy say they agree with you that no adult should be friends with a child, that you have to raise your kids in different ways. You can be friendly but and loving and kind, but there's a line. Um, Rebecca said, my point is the way language is unused. Yeah. Awareness of words and meaning for children is so important. I agree. Um, but then I'm a wordy. I love words. So, Gigi yeah. says, hi, Rosemary. Hi, Gigi. I would like to have another child, but due to my advanced age, I'm 46, I worry I won't be able to conceive. Do you see a pregnancy happening for me? Uh, I, don't, I don't actually uh, uh, feel that there's an issue. Um, I think the issues more are about how old you will be the child will be so on and so forth uh will you be capable at a i don't think it's a question of whether you'll conceive but i think you've sorted all these things out in your mind and uh you know i mean there's something to be said for being a young mother but there's also something to be said for being an older uh, an older and wiser mother too so uh i think you need to sort of take a good look at why i think i think yes you can if you want you will but i think the issue should be more of why at uh, this age what is actually missing in your life why do you why do you need this in your life maybe you just absolutely love kids and you want to have another dozen i don't know but i think it's a it's it's more of a question of why uh because will a child fill the need inside of you because there's obviously a need for something inside of you and do you think a child will fill that need or 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 what so i think it's a it's a much bigger conversation than uh whether you can yep vera would like to know why do ghosts many times say help me when you hear them through a ghost box speaker or a ghost box speaker what have you been up to vera <laughs> um are they stuck or is it heaven or is heaven close for them because they have done something bad or what do you think? No, I, well, uh, no, um, 
I think it's more a question of, um, I'm trying to think if I ever heard, I, I don't believe in ghosts anywhere, as you know, uh, I believe in people who are in the spirit world. So if I would hear someone in the spirit world saying, help me, I think it would be more a question of them asking, can you help me to get a message to someone? Or can you help me to let someone know that I love them? Or can you, can you help me by listening more carefully? Um, but I, no, I don't, I'd love to know what the that what did she say a box or something ghost box ghost box. Uh, t tell me more about that because I've never used one, so I don't even know what it is. And um, remember, when you start to use instruments of any kind, uh, sound can and often does get distorted. So be be careful what you're listening to out there, Vera. <coughs> next, <laughs> keep going. The next one, yes, is from. Better. Better? Mm hmm It says, Dear Rosemary, I'm Elizabeth from Italy. I need your help. I'm worried about my husband's work. In this moment, I feel my grandmother next to me, and I dreamt of her last night. She would like to know if you know what that means. I think if, you, uh, if your grandmother is uh, coming to you in your dreams, I think she's coming for support. So I think that whatever it is that you're worried about or you're getting nervous about, I think that, you know, your grandmother's there to say, no matter what happens, you know, you'll be fine. You will be okay. And I think your husband will be okay too, my darling. But when when we see our loved ones in the spirit world, they're really coming to give us help and they're coming to give us strength and they're coming to give us guidance. And I think that's wonderful for you, my darling. Are you ready? Yeah. Dean said, Yes, Dean. I astral traveled last night with my brother Ooh. just before I woke up today. Oh, nice. I can't remember much other than being a bit frightened at the speed we were going. <laughs> yeah, it is fast. <laughs> and it's the first time that Dean can recall traveling. Okay. Well, thank you for letting us know. I'm not going to make a comment on it, not on this show, but if you want to talk about it. At another time, we can talk about it. Just watch what you're doing, young man. Keep going. The last one I've got in here okay. is from Rebecca. It says, Rosemary, what's the best joke Spirit has said to you? Mine is a joker at times. Oh, geez. <laughs> you know how many years I've been doing this? <laughs> I don't know. I'm... I haven't, I haven't a clue, but I'll give you a little ghost ditty if you'd like one, uh, because uh, a, a few of my students got together on Monday night and uh, they brought along with them uh, lots of ditties and jokes and different things. And um, so I'll tell you this, and I'll tell, then I will tell you the joke that I, I gifted to my grandson the other day because I sent him a book of jokes. So here's the ghost ditty. Um, it's a tongue twister actually. Three little ghostesses. Three little ghostesses sitting on postesses, eating buttered toastesses, licking their fittesses up to their wristesses. Oh, what beastesses to have such beastesses. And there you have it. Did you get that, Michelle? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a little ghost. It's a, a ghosty tongue twister. And I, I think you told me that one at um, <laughs> Halloween when we were doing the superstitions thing. Maybe, yeah, maybe so. And um, my grandson was telling lots of uh, jokes of, of different sorts. And being British, of course, uh, somebody's bringing a box to us. I don't know what that's all about. Ooh, it's a gift. It's a birthday thing. Or is I don't it... know. We will have to open it to find out. Oh, a nice it's big... It's perishable. Oh, a, a gift then maybe or maybe not uh anyway oh fedex gift we'll open that later on maybe it's something we can have for dessert with our bacon after it's our bacon. from a candy place it is mm -hmm. oh all right then should we open it then why why not open it on the show would you like to open it on the show come on let's get a, get a knife then okay uh, perishable items enclosed Look at this. See, I did warn you, didn't I? I said, look at this. It's a big box. 
You know what happens with big boxes though, don't you? They have lots and lots and lots and lots of packing inside and consequently she's gone to get scissors or some set, something. Yes. But, uh, and then you sort of get into all the packing and then there's this little tiny thing inside. So, oh, good, good, good. Let's see what, let's see what it is. Uh, so here is a joke from that I made up for my grandson because he was saying what you call this and what to call that and so on and so forth. So I, off the top of my head, said to him, what type of dog do you find in the toilet? Remember he's seven, seven years old, right? Uh, what type of dog do you find in the toilet recently? He said, I don't know, Mosey, what kind? What type of dog do you find in the toilet? And I said, a poodle. And he is still chuckling about that. So if you have children or grandchildren or anything going on with that. <laughs> Would you like me to read the note? Oh, go ahead. It says, a very happy birthday. Enjoy your day. I would have sent you vodka tonic to accompany the cherries. <gasps> But I didn't see it on the site, so I hope this little cake makes the grade. Have a wonderful day. Love, Maggie. Share the cake with Michelle. Ooh! P.S.S. I chose the smaller cherry so Samantha doesn't get irritated at me for sending you too much and making your this calories go up. This is called Bumpy Cake. You're not having any. I refused it. Well, maybe. It I don't know what it is. It's cake. Bumpy Cake. I'm keeping the cherry. I've only got five pounds of cherries in another bag. Thank you, Maggie. Um, there's Darling. something else in there. Oh, and another carrot. Ooh, uh, carrot cake. Yum, yum, yum. Okay. That's oh, it. That's Maggie, it. darling, <laughs> you are lovely. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're so glad it came this morning. See, this is what having a birthday week is all about. Sort of, they, they just, the things just keep popping up all the time. Thank you, Maggie, my darling. That's so, 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 so nice of you. And um, I did read your advice this morning, uh, by the way, the competition. And uh, you are up there. Just, I'm not saying that because I'm really not saying that because you just sent me a birthday gift. But you are sort of up there. So, yeah. You might be getting something back from me fairly soon. Uh, all right, so anything else before we go? Isn't it nice that we're able to share uh, my birthday with everybody else? You know, when you're ready, Michelle, anytime. Are you eating? What are you eating? A cherry. <gasps> she stole one of my, ch you stole one of my chocolate cherries, didn't you? Aren't mm -hmm. they good? They're delicious. This is a person who does not like chocolate, but they are good, aren't they? They are really good. Yeah. Um, Just say. So. Carlo so said, I was sleeping and I dream like a fireman. Touch my left shoulder when I wake up and I felt like it was very real. Okay. Um, well, thank you for sharing that. Do we have anything else going on here? Rebecca says, I think we forget spirits is there to make us happy i feel that's important I don't think well i think so i think it's very important that we understand that our loved ones in the spirit world uh i never call them spirits or ghosts but our loved ones and those who care about us in the spirit world they come to visit us because they they do they want us to know that they're around so i'm going to tell you this last little little bit of this story of my birthday so on my birthday morning I woke up and uh, let the dog out, did all of that stuff, and then I spent an hour on the on um, uh, FaceTime with my with my daughter and my grandson. He wrote me a beautiful story uh, about uh, uh, the, a birthday on the beach, and um, so that was nice. And then I went into the I fed the dog, went into the kitchen, and as I got went into the kitchen, I looked and i saw the tv light there's a there's a sort of like a little chandelier thing over where the tv is and uh, it was on now all of my lamps are powered by alexa to say that quietly they're powered by alexa so 
in order to put them on, I don't know that one. In order to, in order to put them on, you have to say, mm hmm, uh, uh, TV light or or living room light or bedroom light or guest bedroom light or whatever it is you're having to use your guest room light or whatever. And so you know you have to actually actively put them on uh, like that. So uh, I go. I notice I'm in the kitchen, I notice that the light over the TV is on and I'm thinking, oh, that's odd, I must have forgotten to switch it off last night. But it is really odd because it's the last thing I ever do before I go to bed. I let out the puppy and I turn off the TV light and then it's a ritual and then I go to bed. So I never thought any more about it, I just assumed I'd left it on. So then a little bit later I was here uh, in, the, in my living room and there is a, a lamp over in the corner which hasn't worked for almost a year and it just needs the plug putting back in or something anyway but it's, it's not it's broken it's not worked with Alexa it's not worked with anything at all and it's because it's in a corner I've been loath to bend down and put it in because my back tends to go out if I bend down you know in weird places so uh, I'm sitting here on the sofa and I'm talking to a friend of mine in England and I look across and I see the lamp that has been broken for nearly a year uh, is on and I'm thinking how how can that be so uh, I ask Alexa turn it off and it turns it off now it hasn't worked you understand it hasn't worked for months and months and months so then I ask to turn it back on it works I turn it back off it works I'm thinking that is so strange how weird is that and anyway did I, I thought oh well you know did, did one of those things and then I head towards my bedroom and I notice that the guest room seems to be particularly bright so I go into the guest room and all the lamps all the bedside lamps everything all the lights are on so at some point for my birthday I was shown the light in so many different ways and I do believe that it was those in the spirit world who were saying to me happy birthday to you and you're not on your own because you know with the pandemic and all the rest of it of course I'm I'm on my own my birthday was all by myself you know that thing uh, anyway and I thought how really really lovely so now my lamp in my uh, sitting room is working my I had to go around and ask Alexa to turn everything off individually because it's the only way they'll go on but I thought you might like to hear that story of how those in the spirit world they do bring us joy they do bring us love and boy oh boy did they ever for my birthday they brought me light in abundance we shall see you again hopefully if you can join us on saturday for our uh, story time saturday morning um 11 a.m uh, eastern standard time we're going to tell the story of the haunted circus uh so that i've already decided on that story because it happened on my uh, on one of my birthdays and um so i thought with it being a birthday week i would tell that story where a friend of mine and I went into a circus, uh, an old circus that had been closed for many years. Did we see anything? Did we hear anything? What happened? Or was it just an old dark building and nothing at all happened there? Oh, anyway, that story is for 11 a.m. on this coming Saturday uh, morning. Uh, it will be on my main uh, Facebook page. If you want to know any more about us, if you want to tell us all of your stories, because I'm always open to them, if you want to ask questions, whatever it is you want, if you want healing, uh, if you want a consultation, whatever it is that you want, please email me rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com and, uh, uh, and we'll do our very best to answer. If you could, when you send the email, if you could put whatever the subject is in the subject line, it helps Michelle to sort out you know in the, the different areas uh, and it helps us to answer your emails uh, uh, as quickly as we possibly can um, you will find that uh, you will find be able to uh, 
find all sorts of things on our YouTube channels. There's the Kitchen Channel, Rosemary Altair Kitchen, uh, in the kitchen. Um, Hands on healing on Wednesday afternoons. What else do we do, Michelle? So many, many things. Oh, there's oh, there's everything. Is attitude on Thursday nights. We have this, class tonight, on Thursday nights. Tonight we have a guest on our Everything Is Attitude show. We have our wonderful, wonderful Jeff Galuzzo who's coming on the show, uh, and uh, that's at eight uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And he's lovely. You'll love him. He's great. Uh, and. Um, what else? Uh, uh, I don't think that's it. We have another competition contest in the works that we, we'll be announcing soon. Yes, we do have another competition. Uh, sort of fairly soon. Maybe we'll have one for the summer or maybe we'll have one for after the summer. An after summer competition. You just never know what we're going to be doing. Um, if you wish to be on my email list so that you get notified of anything and everything that we are doing, please, you must send an email again rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com and you must request please put me on your email list because otherwise we don't automatically do it uh, you will not get be inundated by you know loads and loads of um, emails because we don't do that you might get four or five a month and that's pretty much it you can find me on instagram if you want to see the bacon sandwich and the perfect egg go to my instagram if you want to uh, we we are on Twitter, we are on Facebook, we have three Facebook pages, we have the Healing Facebook page, the main Facebook page, and, 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 another, Your other Facebook and, page. and another one. Uh, you can find us there. We would really, really, really love it, and I should be in trouble with Michelle if I don't say this, we, we would really, 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 really love it if you can share. Can you share? And also, if you could subscribe, because the more subscribers we have on YouTube, the more things that we are capable of doing. I, I don't know how it works out. And honestly, it costs you not a penny. And it doesn't. they don't send out notifications to you or anything like that. They might when you so, go live. So please, yeah, they'll, they might just pop up. If I'm live on YouTube, they might just send you a little notification. Rosemary's live. Subscribe, 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 share, 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 and all of that good stuff. Uh, I shall see those of you tonight who want to join me on my uh, Facebook page, uh, the healing page, my healing page for Everything is Attitude. Uh, that is 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, for those of you who want to join me for story time, it's, it's the Haunted Circus. Really though, was it really? Or was it just other people saying it was haunted? Was it really haunted or not? What do we think? Uh, join me on Saturday morning and I'll tell you all about another spooky, spooky, spooky story that we've got there. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, and I think that's it. Uh, so uh, until I see you again, thank you, thank you, thank you all of you uh, for your competition entries. Thank you all of you for joining me today. Judy, we do hope we've not driven you away with our show and that you'll join us again. And thank you everyone for supporting and all of those fabulous birthday wishes story time on saturday that's my that'll be my last of my birthday week but it'll be fun we'll make it fun we are now going to actually go maggie and test out the cake uh, don't you think michelle absolutely Should we test out the cake absolutely we have to make sure it tastes good after being shipped we do we do. We have to taste it. We'll Quality let you know. control. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Maggie, darling. It was so lovely, lovely, lovely of you. And thank you all of you for watching. Uh, and until I see you again, please, all of you, have a very, 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 very wonderful and very blessed rest of the day. And have a very blessed weekend, everybody. Bye bye. And I think I've got to point the finger up here somewhere. There. There we go. <laughs> I can't do it.